Good morning, everybody. I hope everybody is having a wonderful, wonderful day so far. It's, I've absolutely loved hearing all the conversation, everybody talking, and, and uh, we're going to get into some announcements real quickly here, and I'm going to throw down these parts of the hymnal first because that's what I wanted to do. All right, we're going to get into some announcements real quick before we get started this morning. First of all, I want to let you know that beginning tonight with the youth service is our South Carolina camp meeting. That's going to be in Lake City. Now, tonight's service will be at 630. Like I said, it's a youth service. Brother Morris Smith is going to be preaching. And it's actually going to be held this evening at the Lake City uh, PH Church. Now, if you don't know where that is, but you know where the tabernacle is, you know where the Lake City Church is. It's right next to it. So, uh, but that's going to be tonight at 630. But then the regular camp meeting services begin tomorrow morning at 10, excuse me, at 1030. And uh, morning services will be Monday through Thursday at 1030. Evening services will be Monday through Wednesday at 7. And then Thursday is the uh, Turbyville Home for Children, the, the Hope Train, and then the service uh, right after that. So if you're able to make it out for that, that'd be wonderful. We will not have service this Wednesday here because we want to encourage you, if you can afford the gas money, to make your way to Lake City and be in service with us at camp meeting. So just keep that in mind if you would. Um, also want to mention that uh, if you are a driver for food ministry, we are changing food ministry, moving it back one week uh, from the 1st to the 8th. Uh, just because of the 4th of July holiday, so please make sure that you let your people know, because we don't want them sitting there with their napkin tucked in and their fork and knife like this, waiting for you to bring food, and then you don't bring any. Uh, that's not going to look good. So please let your uh, people know that you are going to be uh, a week later than we normally would be for the month of July. Also want to mention that on July the 9th, I'm going to be offering a church membership class. That's going to be at 1030, and it'll be right here in the sanctuary. If you are interested in joining Oak Grove as a member, uh, then you need to come to this class. And if you come to the class and you say, hey, I don't want to join, no problem. We're not going to yell at you or scream at you. You're not required to do anything. There's no fee unless you don't join the church. If you don't join the church, then we're going to do a fee of $100. But no, no we're not really going to do that. But it's, it's a thought. But anyway, we're going to have that. If you are wanting to be in that membership class, we already have some that have let me know. So we are definitely going to be having it. Uh, if you would, though, just let me know by next Sunday if you want to be in the membership class, just so I can have an idea of about how many people we're going to be having. As you exit the building today, you're going to notice some flyers that are on the doors, and they are advertising VBS. Now, VBS is the first week of August. You might say, well, Pastor, this is only the last week of June. I know, August is coming, though, trust me. And so uh, we've got some flyers actually in the foyer on the table that you can take, and you can put them at the gas stations or at your neighbor's house or wherever it is you think that people might see it. Uh, take a flyer, go put it up someplace. We want as many people to know as possible about our VBS and about what's going to be going on. We purposely put it later in the summer so that all the rest of the churches would have already had theirs. So we're going to be sending out some of these flyers to the other churches in the area. And uh, we just, we want you to be a part of this. And uh, Brother Ryan wants you to be a part of this. And if you're saying, well, Pastor, I would love to help with VBS. I'm so glad that, about that. You need to see Brother Ryan. If you're saying, Pastor, I don't want to help with VBS. Well, go talk to Brother Ryan because he'll convince you uh, to, to be a part. He did with me. So anyway, uh, but that's going to be the first week of August, and then that Saturday we're actually going to be ending it up with a big back-to-school bash because school is going to be back in session soon. Thank you, Jesus. And so um, uh, we're going uh, to have a whole lot going on that day. Uh, we're going to have a bouncy house and water slide, and we're going to have uh, pony rides if you aren't too girthy. Uh, we're going to have a uh, petting zoo. We're, I mean, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have a great time. And of course, everybody is invited. Now you might say, pastor, do we have to attend VBS to go to the back to school bash? Absolutely not. But we're going to be mad at you if you do. So just make sure that you come to VBS as well. You might be saying, pastor, I'm too old for VBS. I'm an old man or I'm an old woman. You probably are, but we have a class for you as well. So Classes for all ages, doesn't matter how young you are, how old you are, we got something for you, and you have no excuses. So just keep all of that in mind. Last thing I want to mention is we have our Family Freedom Fun Day 
coming up this Saturday. And it's going to be from 6 p.m. to dark because we've got some fireworks we're going to be setting off at the end. Hopefully not set anything on fire uh, other than the fireworks. But we've got a lot of stuff in store. We're going to have a hot dog eating contest. Woo! And uh, a couple of you are excited about that. The rest of you are like, oh, that late at night? I don't know. And that's when you know you're old. So, but we're going to have a hot dog eating contest. And it's going to be towards the beginning of the evening, probably 6.30, 7 o'clock. We're not 100% sure yet. But if you are interested, yes, sir. See, I'm not even going to answer that because I know where you're going with the answer. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm not going to be in the contest, actually. Thank you very much. Because, why? Be, because I, I like taking my time with my food. And, uh, and besides, I don't want to make everybody else look bad. So, uh, <laughs> no, you, you know what? I'm just going to move on from there. Thanks, Brother Cheryl, for, for messing up my flow. Anyway, uh, but we're going to have a hot dog eating contest that Brother Cheryl is challenging everyone to. He doesn't think any of y'all have a chance. And so please make sure that you, uh, that you are ready for that. We're going to have uh, all sorts of different games. We're going to have some wiffle ball going on. Tug of war. That's the one that I'm ready to take down, Brother Cheryl, in is tug of war. And, uh, and so uh, we're going to have just all sorts of things going on. But just come out, and even if you just say, I don't want to do any of those activities, come out for the fellowship. And if you say, I don't want a fellowship, what's wrong with you? So uh, come on out for that. That's going to be this Saturday, July 2nd, and it's going to be uh, beginning at 6 over at the Family Life Center. Can you invite people? Sure. Why not? Especially people that are unchurched. Why don't you invite somebody that you've been trying to get them to come to our church and they don't want to come to a service, but they are willing to eat a bunch of hot dogs until they throw up. Make sure and invite them and, uh, and let's just show them what a great church we are. All right. Uh, I think those are all the major announcements. I do want to take some time as we begin uh, this morning. Um, for those of you who have not been keeping up, if you're not on Facebook or you don't know what's going on, uh, Emma Brooke is going to be having her transplant next week next week and we have been praying about this and we believe that god has got this completely under control there's not going to be a problem they have actually been doing a t-shirt fundraiser um to just to try to earn a little bit of, uh because they're going to have to be in pittsburgh for a while we're going to miss them very much but uh but they're doing a t-shirt fundraiser and i have no idea how many shirts they have i have no idea what sizes they have but gina does so you can go talk to gina because she loves talking to people Go talk to Gina about it, and, uh, and if you are interested, they're $20, is that right? $20 a piece, and it's a way for you to be able to support them as they go through this, uh, this transplant with EB, and you can, you can Venmo, you can PayPal, you can give her cash, you can write a check, you can gold bullion, Bitcoin, I don't know, but you can, she will tell you how you can uh, take care of that, but if you would like to, to uh, buy a shirt, you can contact Gina, and she'll be more than happy to uh, let you know what she has available. All right. Now, speaking of them, I want to ask the family if they would come forward. And I'm going to ask, uh, normally I'd have everybody come up and lay hands on them as we pray. I'm going to ask the family to come forward. <laughs> that The family that's going to Pittsburgh and going to be, there you go. Y'all don't like to do it when I first say it. Everybody, well, no, it's like there have been other times I've, I've said, you know, if, 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 can I get all the kids to come forward? And they're all looking at me like, I ain't going to be the first one. <laughs> but normally I would have the church come forward and lay hands on them and, and pray. But with all the sickness that's been going around, we don't want to take any kind of chance whatsoever um, that uh, any of them would get sick. Uh, but we're going to pray. I'm going to anoint a cloth that I want them to bring with them. And we're going to pray and believe that uh, because y'all are actually leaving next Sunday. Is that correct? Uh, on Saturday? Sunday. That's why I wasn't asking you. Um, they're, they're actually, they're actually going to be leaving next Sunday to go to Pittsburgh for uh, the surgery. And of course, you know, it's not just uh, Emma Brooke, but it's also Megan because she is going to be the donor. And we're so thrilled that God has worked the, uh, the way that he has worked. Um, Megan has known since the beginning that God was going to use her to be a blessing for EB but we're not going to let them go up there even though we're not going with them we're not letting them go up there without the prayers of their church family so I do want to ask you to stand if you would and if you'll just stretch your hands forth this way we're going to be praying and we're believing 
We're believing for traveling mercies. We're believing that every financial need is going to be met. We're believing that as they go through the surgery, that there will be no complications and no problems whatsoever. We're going to believe that the recovery is going to be speedy and that it's going to be complete. We're believing for total and complete healing through this operation in the name of Jesus. Amen? And if you are in agreement with me on that, I want us to pray right now, and we're just going to pray for this whole family, all right? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you because of what you have done in this situation in this circumstance god we have already seen you move over and over and over again the way you've provided the way that you've opened the doors father the way you've made everything come about and lord we're just going to continue to stand with this family god as they pack up and they go to pittsburgh next week lord they're they may be going just with their family but we are going with them in our prayers and our support in the name of jesus we're believing god that everything is going to be fine that this praise report father is going to move hearts and is going to touch lives lord that we're going to see a great and powerful move come from the testimony of this situation in the name of jesus father i pray for total and complete recovery for them as they go through this surgery as they go through uh, this situation god lord i pray you'll bring comfort i pray you'll bring peace i pray that their bodies will do exactly as you desire for them to do father there will be no complications we rebuke the enemy now in the name of Jesus from trying to bring fear from trying to bring sickness from trying to bring infection we rebuke the enemy now in the name of Jesus and as this family takes this uh, prayer cloth with them to Pittsburgh as this family takes this with them Lord there's nothing magical about this cloth but it represents the prayers of a family that is uh, a body of believers that is standing up standing in the gap for this family as they go through this situation Lord we pray that every single detail Lord, that your, your anointing and your Holy Spirit will touch it in the name of Jesus. And we thank you in advance, God, for everything you're going to do. We thank you in advance for the way you're going to move upon them. We thank you in advance, Lord, for what you have in store for this family. We glorify you and we praise you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Lord, as we open up our service today, God, there are so many that are dealing with sickness and, and pain. There's so many that are dealing with circumstances in their lives but lord we just put all of it at your feet today god as we open up this service lord we put every burden at your feet so we can be free to worship so we can be free to praise you because we are here to bring you honor we are in this place today to bring you glory we are in this place today to declare the the good and the righteous and the holy day of the lord and father we pray your spirit will just permeate this place today god would you saturate our very soul as we lift you up and we glorify you in our praise and our worship in our giving in our prayers in everything that we do God Lord we just pray in Jesus name that you will minister to us today as we minister to you with our praise we give you glory and honor in the name of Jesus we pray today hallelujah hallelujah amen would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise this morning thank you all thank you all Please continue to remember the family as they travel. Remain standing as we go into a time of praise and worship this morning. Oh, I will bless the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Sing unto the King of Israel. I will bless the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Sing unto the King of Israel. Oh, 
Once my heart was filled with sin, once I had no peace within, till I heard of Jesus died upon the tree, and there came a peace, and there came a peace so sweet, said the comforter of
Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. How you be seated this morning. We feel Jesus in this place. Amen. Amen. I hope that you came to this house today expecting to receive, expecting to feel the move of God. Because when we come expecting, then that's when we end up seeing it happen. Amen. Amen. I, I need to start making a list of all the things I need to say because I always forget things. But So I want to uh, mention a couple of things real quickly before I have our children come up. First of all, uh, we have a, a thank you card. It says, Oak Grove, thank you so much. It means more than you know. Love, Jaden. And uh, this is for the graduation gift that we gave to Jaden. And so we're so grateful that, um, that he appreciated it. But we're so proud of him for uh, his achievements and all of our graduates. And we uh, are just ready to see what God's going to do in their lives. Another thing I wanted to mention, I had mentioned about camp meeting. And on Thursday night of camp meeting, I said the Hope Train from the uh, Turbyville Children's Home is going to be there at 6, and then they're going to have the service at 7, and the whole day is kind of geared towards um, the, the children's home. And each church is asked to bring an offering and, and that sort of thing. And uh, so our women's ministries are going to be giving an offering. But I wanted to give you an opportunity because some of you already give to the, ch the children's home every uh, month or, or a couple of months or whatever it is. And we appreciate that. Um, if you don't know what the children's home is, it's a place uh, for where kids can go and they can be safe. It's a place where kids that are, are having difficulties, having troubles, or having uh, maybe their parents have, have gone off and are, are in jail or, or on drugs or something like that. It's a place where they can go and they can be safe and they can be blessed and they hear the word of God. Now, here's the thing. This week, we, we experienced something that I wasn't sure we would ever see, and that was the overturning of Roe versus Wade. And uh, yes... And you see, as a pastor, I don't have the same freedoms that y'all do to be able to put on Facebook and all that what you really feel. Uh, some of you can get really political on Facebook, and some of you can flat out call people idiots on Facebook. I want to, too, but I, I can't because I'm a preacher. I got to, you know, got to keep that open. But I, I've, I've, it's been breaking my heart, honestly, to see the number of people that have been complaining and acting like the world is about to come to an end because w you can't just go and kill a baby any place that you want, any time that you want. And, um, but I'm, I'm grateful because it's, it's something. And yeah, we're having some problems with this mic, so I'm probably going to switch over to this one if that's all right. Uh, if it's not all right, I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, let me turn this off. So we don't get double. And there we go. All right. So uh, I, I personally, I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that God has allowed this to happen. And um, in fact, there, there are some states that uh, within 15 minutes, I had read within 15 minutes, the attorney general of the state of Missouri had gotten up and had a press conference and basically said that uh, any kind of abortions can be banned in the state of Missouri. And, uh, you know, we could get into all the politics of it and all that kind of thing, but we're not going to because it's a church, not a, uh, uh, not a Senate floor. But... Uh, but I, I say all that to say that at least we're making some moves. The church is, is making a difference, and we're making some moves towards trying to protect the unborn and trying, trying to protect our children. But what we've been accused of with all this, and I don't mean to take this much time with it, but I'm, it, it's fine. Uh, what we've been accused of as a church is that we're pro-birth. Uh, you know, we don't care about them once they actually get born. We just care about them while they're in the womb. Well, okay, then what is the Turby Ville Children's Home for. I keep wanting to call it the Turby Children's Home. The Turbyville Children's Home. We are, we are trying to be out there for those kids. We're trying to bless them. We're trying to help them. There are so many other uh, um, organizations and, and programs that we have going in the uh, PH to try to help those that, that get pregnant and they don't want to ha have the baby. They're not ready for a baby. And so we find a place for them to adopt. Uh, you know, uh, women that have been abused, that have been uh, uh, trafficked, that have been uh, raped and all these kinds of things. We have places for them. And so this is just one of those, uh, those things that you can give towards. And uh, it, it'll be a blessing. What we're going to do in the offering that we're going to take up here in just a few minutes, I wanted to give you some time so that you could uh, write another check or do whatever you had to do 
was getting on my nerves today. Uh, so you could write a check or whatever you had to do. Uh, I wanted to give you some time for that. But any non-designated funds. Now, if you give in tithe and uh, market tithe, it's going to be tithe. If you give in the building fund, it's going to be building fund. Give a love offering to the pastor, it'll be a love offering to the pastor. But, uh, but no, any undesignated funds that are taken up in the offering today are going to go towards the Turbyville Children's Home Offering that we're going to be giving on Thursday. So uh, in the next few moments, if you would just think about that before the ushers come and uh, think about what you would like to give and how you would like to bless that ministry, uh, we'd greatly appreciate it. Now I'm going to ask if our children that are going to Children's Church, if you'd come up into this area right here, like right now, just like God bless you for coming up first time. Man, he's, oh, I love you, man. No, but, uh, but if our kids would just come up, I'm just going to talk to them for a few moments and then I'm going to dismiss you. Uh, to uh, to Children's Church today. And see, that's why I need the list, because I forgot to give you an update on Brother Charles as well. Uh, Brother Charles Reedling had hip replacement surgery uh, this past Friday and uh, spoke with Sister Evelyn today, and he's doing well. Uh, everything went well with the surgery. He's doing about as well as you can expect as far as recovery. He actually uh, was surprising the doctors by how much he was up walking on Friday night. So uh, just continue to keep him in prayer for his recovery. And, of course, uh, continue to keep both of them in prayer, especially Sister Evelyn having to be kind of the a nursemaid to him for right now, uh, that God will give them strength. Also wanted to give you an update on Glenda. I spoke with her this morning as well. And uh, her faith has not wavered. Her body is weary. Uh, she had a setback this week. But God is still faithful. The bacteria in her eye is dead. The pressure in her eye is normal. So we're just believing that whatever it is that Satan's trying to do to, to stop her, she still doesn't have vision in that eye. But whatever the enemy is trying to do, that God is going to break the arm of the enemy. Amen. And I want you to pray that with me as we pray. And that God would give her strength, physical strength, because of everything that she's going through. So uh, please uh, keep those uh, requests in mind. And all right, kids. Y'all ever heard the term disciples? You know, the disciples of Jesus. Do you know how many, how many of you know how many disciples Jesus had? He had more than three. He actually had four times that much. He had 12. 12. I'm going to try to name them, but I always seem to forget somebody. So let me see if I can do this. It's Simon Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Then you had Philip and Thomas. And you're looking at me like you're like testing me. Like, I know them. Do you know them? Yes, I know them. Give me a minute. Uh, so we had uh, Philip, Matthew, Thomas, and Bartholomew. And then we had James, the son of Alphaeus. And then Simon the Zealot. And then we had Thaddeus. I almost forgot about Thaddeus. Got to remember Thaddeus. Good old Thad. He's a good guy. Uh, and then, of course, Judas Iscariot. He was the one that betrayed Jesus. Is that 12? Does that sound like 12? That sounds like 12. And, and, and then uh, and, and Chester. We got to remember Chester. No. But here's the thing. Do you know that you guys can actually be disciples? You don't have to have walked with Jesus. You know, it wasn't just those 12 and nobody else. You know what a disciple is? A disciple is somebody who studies under a teacher and follows their way and follows their philosophy. So as we study the Bible, we're studying Jesus' word, the way he wants us to live, and we become his disciples. So you guys can be disciples, just like Peter was a disciple, just like Thaddeus. I'm going to say that again so I don't forget it. Just like Thaddeus was a disciple. All of them, you can be a disciple too, but we need to study and we need to listen to what God has to say to us. We need to see what his word says. And this is why you go to children's church and Sunday school and all that so that you can learn the word. All right? All right, let's pray, and then I'm going to let you guys uh, get to children's church. Father, we thank you for our children. We thank you, God, that you are, are putting things into their hearts and their minds even now uh, as children. I pray, Lord, that you will just help them to decide to be disciples of Jesus Christ, to study the word and to study his way so that we can have a life that is pleasing and honorable to you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, y'all, go on to Children's Church, behave yourselves, or else they're going to beat you with something, I think. I don't know. Let's give our kids a hand as they go to Children's Church this morning. <clears throat> and now I'm going to ask our ushers to come at this time, if they would, and we're going to receive this morning's tithe and offering. We're also going to be receiving, uh, as I said, any undesignated funds will go to the Turbyville uh, children's home and um, I'm being told that it's supposed to start uh, that the service tonight is actually in the tabernacle I was also told at one point that it was in at the Lake City Church 
it's going to be either in the Lake City Church or in the Tabernacle. Um, it's got to be one of those two places. So just park someplace in the middle and look where all the people are going and then follow that line. So anyway, I have no idea if I'm right or wrong. I hope I'm right and that person that messaged me that is wrong because that would really make my day. All right, we're going to pray over the offering today. I ask you to give as the Lord lays on your heart because I know that God is wanting to bless you as you give uh, to his ministry and as you give to souls being one to the kingdom of God. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for everything you provide for us. We thank you that we have uh, a roof over our heads. We thank you for the clothes on our back. We thank you for everything that you give us, Lord. And we know, Father, that we are nothing without you. And everything we have is because of your mercy and grace. And so, Father, we ask now that as we give today, Lord, we'll give out of the abundance of our heart, God, because you have given out of the abundance of yours. And I pray that every need will be met. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. God, God bless you as you give this morning. Traveling through this world of sorrow, I'm on my way to glory land. I'll not turn back for some tomorrow. My trials here, oh, I'll understand. Oh, I want to know more about my Jesus. I want to know more. About my Lord, I want to know more about that mansion I'm going to receive as my reward. I want to know more about that homeland. Oh, I mean to go there someday somehow. And after I reach that heavenly city, I mean to know more than I know now. I'm glad I know the blessed Savior. For through his blood, he set me free. Oh, the rough the road, I shall not waver. For some that day, oh, his face I see. I want to know more about my Jesus. I want to know more about my Lord. I want to know more about that mansion. Oh, I'm going to receive as my reward. I want to know more about that homeland. I mean to go there. Someday, somehow, and after I reach that heavenly city, I mean to know more than I know now. He promised when his soul ascended, I'm coming back. The Lord did say, if on his promise you depended, Soar away. Oh, I want to know more about my Jesus. I want to know more about my Lord. I want to know more about that mansion. Oh, I'm going to receive. Oh, it's my reward. I want to know more about that whole plan. I mean to go there someday, 
it somehow And after I reach that heavenly city Oh, I mean to know more than I know now Oh, I want to know more about my Jesus I want to know more about my Lord I want to know more about that mansion I'm going to receive as my reward. Oh, I want to know more about that homeland. Oh, I mean to go there someday, somehow. And after I reach that heavenly city, I mean to know more. Just one more time. I want to know more about my Jesus. I want to know more about my Lord. I want to know more about that mansion I'm going to receive. Oh, that's my reward. Oh, I want to know more about that homeland. Oh, Someday, somehow, and after I reach that heavenly city, I need no more than I know now. Come on and give him a praise in this house this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How many of you want to know more about Jesus? Amen, amen. Remain standing for the reading of the word today, if you would, and if you have your Bibles, thank you, praise team, I appreciate it. If you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. We're going to read verses 1 through 4. 1 Corinthians 3, verses 1 through 4. So grateful for the presence of the Lord in this place, amen? A couple of you, good. Maybe the rest of you will catch on by the end of the service. Glory to God. So thankful for the presence of the Lord in this place. I'm glad each, each and every one of you are here. I'm glad for those that are watching online. But I'm most thankful for the presence of the Lord in this place. Amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are ye able. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are ye not carnal and walk as men? For while one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are ye not carnal? Father, we thank you for your presence that's been in this house already this morning. And we just pray in Jesus' name that as we go through this next part of the service, Lord, that your anointing would continue to rest upon us. Lord, upon me as the speaker, as upon, upon me as your vessel to bring your word forth, but upon your people that they might receive the word. Lord, let them be fallow ground that the seed can come in and it can take root and that a great harvest will come forth. We give you honor and glory and power and praise in Jesus' name. And the church said, amen, amen. You may be seated this morning. I want to speak to you today. I had actually meant to preach this a couple weeks ago, and the Lord had other plans. And believe me, anytime he's got other plans, I am good with it. But I want to speak to you today about spiritual retardation. Now, here's the thing. I don't want anybody in here getting offended and saying, oh, he used a bad word and a mean word and all that kind of thing. I used an actual word. It has a definition. Now, there are words that we have in society that we don't say these kinds of things. We say this instead. And, and we don't say that someone is, is retarded. We say that they are uh, uh, developmentally challenged. Or we, we use something that sounds a little bit nicer. But I'm actually giving you clinical wordage or you know, verbiage here as far as uh, what I'm saying. Uh, as far as when we talk about spiritual retardation. Because even in music, 
the word retard is in, is in music. We, you know, we don't say retard, we say retard, because that sounds classier. But, uh, and what it means is that it means that you slow down everything. If, if there's a retard in music, if you see that symbol, and you know that it, it's time to retard that music, that means that when you get to that part, you're supposed to slow it down from the tempo that there is. And there's actually a definition for the word retard, and it says delay or hold back in terms of progress, development, or accomplishment. So when I'm talking about spiritual retardation, I'm not talking about somebody who is dumb about things about the spirit. That's not what I'm saying. Or, you know, somebody that who you know, or, or trying to call somebody a derogatory uh, uh, name, some kind of a, a slur or a pejorative. I'm not doing that. I'm I'm using an actual term that really means something, and it's going to bring across the point that I'm trying to make today. But in all fairness, it also probably got your attention. So there's that too. But spiritual retardation, we talk about with physical retardation. If, if a baby is born, and, and maybe they're born a little early, and maybe it takes longer for them to develop uh, their lungs, or maybe they're, they're uh, just any other part of their body that needs to grow, it might take longer. Their physical development is retarded. It is slowed down. It is, it is having a hard time progressing forward at the normal speed, at the at the, the proper speed when we talk about somebody who is mentally retarded it is somebody who you know they're not a bad person they're not a horrible person you know they just have a a a problem as far as their mental development you know uh, you hear about people that say well you know they're they're 25 years old with the the mind of a seven-year-old you know that kind of thing and that that is a mental retardation because they should be at this place but instead they're at this place the problem is we have so many spiritually retarded people in the church and I know that sounds funny but we have so many spiritually retarded people in the church that it's no wonder that we're not seeing miracles happen the way that they happened in the times of the disciples it's no wonder that we're not seeing souls coming to the altar and 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 churches that are making a difference in their communities and in their cities because they're full of people who have allowed spiritual retardation to take place in their lives as we read uh what uh what paul is saying here he's saying that you know he's been feeding them the milk because when you're a baby, you know, you get the milk or you get the formula and you, you get something that's very easy to digest. There's no effort in digesting that compared to digesting some prime rib. There's no effort in digesting that, especially compared to uh, ingesting Mexican food. You know what I'm saying? You know, there, it, it's so easy for the child because their digestive system is still developing. You don't want to give them too much. If you are the type of parent who you have a baby and when you come, come home, you give them the bone from your t-bone steak and just let them suck on that as a pacifier shame on you because they don't have the capability to be able to digest all of those things the proteins and, and all that kind of stuff and so we have to start real small and we have to start with that milk or that formula and parents you remember that I know that you remember, yo, I, I know there were women that, you know, they the, naturally they'll breastfeed and there's other women that they go with the formula and all that kind of thing. And, and back in the day, it was cow milk, right? Or you know, how many of you, that's what your parents gave you, gave you cow milk or goat milk or whatever other animal was in the backyard. Yeah, a couple of you raised your hand, but you don't want to say that you're old, but that's all right. But, but you know, we start with something very easy because they can't, they can't take anything else. But as they grow... Then we begin to get to the baby foods, and then mashed up peas that look the same going in as they do coming out. You know what I mean? Or the carrots. Listen, I, it's no wonder that children usually don't like carrots. Look at what we gave them when they were babies. And then we said, these are carrots. And well, then I'm never going to eat them again, you know. And, and we, we get these very, they're very bland. There's no seasoning or anything like that. It's just it's boiled up, mashed, and then you give it to them. But it's the next step in their digestion. And eventually, you get to sushi. Or you get to prime rib. Or you get, y'all yeah, shaking your heads, but you're saying, oh, I wouldn't eat sushi. But you'll eat pickled pig's feet. Now, come on, y'all. Or it's like, oh, yeah, chicken feet, that's good, you know, or, or liver pudding, but you won't eat sushi. Okay, so anyway, um, or, or, you know, we get to a wonderful, wonderful place when we get to that place where we can eat anything fried, hallelujah, and we'll fry everything in the south, glory to God. You know, they fry ice cream. I mean, come on, somebody. You know, I mean, if it's fried, then it's good, amen? 
See, y'all said amen way too much for that instead of isn't the Lord good or in his presence in this place. So uh, we'll, we'll open the altar shortly. But, but the problem is, is what Paul was saying was I started you with this milk, but I can't get you to the meat because you're not ready for it. And he said, why? He said, because you're carnal. And when you look up that word carnal, it literally means of the flesh. Because you're too stuck in the things that the flesh wants. Because you're too stuck in the desires of what the flesh desires. And you're focusing on that instead of focusing on, God, what do you desire for me? God, what do you want for my life? God, how do you want me to live? What do you want me to say? And we get focused on the things of, of, uh, you know, that, that are going to please us instead of the things that are going to please God. And let me tell you, you will never, ever ever grow in Jesus Christ by meeting your own needs and your own desires. You will never get stronger in God by you focusing on the things that you want instead of the things that He wants. And that may be hard for you to hear, but the fact of the matter is it's true. Now listen, there is a time and a place for you to have the milk. There's a time and a place for you to have those beginning stages. In fact, we read in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. Peter states, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envyings and all evil speakings, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. There is a time and a place for that. You don't want to have somebody come in and give their heart and life to Jesus Christ. And then say, okay, now we're going to discuss the seven seals of Revelation. That's a bit much. All right, you know, you've just gotten saved. Praise the Lord. That's great. Here, read Leviticus. Listen, Leviticus is part of Scripture, and I'm all fine with Leviticus. And there are actually sermons in there that I have preached. But if you have never picked up a Bible, Leviticus is not the place to start. People will ask, what's the best place to start? You know, I, I want to start reading my Bible. What's the best place to start? And a lot of people say, just start at the beginning and go. And that's great because Genesis is full of all the, you know, you got the ark and you got Abraham going to the mountain and all this kind of thing and Joseph and the coat of many colors. Then you get into Exodus and you get into like the Israelites and the plagues and getting out of Egypt and part of the Red Sea and manna and all this kind of thing. And then you get to Leviticus and you're like, I'm going to put my Bible down for a bit. And you don't ever go back to it. You need to get into the book of John. You need to find out who Jesus is. This Jesus you just gave your life to, you need to find out who he is. And then you need to get into the book of Romans. Romans is basically the Christian handbook. You read that book and you, you see exactly what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to do it and why we're doing it the way that we're doing it. You work slowly and then move up. There is a place for the milk. But the problem is if you've been in church for 30 years, you need to get off a the formula you need to get off of the milk you have retarded your growth in God because of the fact that you are not growing because you are not trying to become more than what you were when you first got saved when you first get saved it is a wonderful thing you, old things are passed away and all things become new you literally become a new creature in Jesus Christ but you're a baby you're a child and we've got churches with 75-year-old babies. And not because they just got saved, but because of the fact that they never went beyond the milk. The difference between spiritual retardation and retardation of the mind or the body is that spiritual retardation is a choice. A baby that is born mentally retarded doesn't have a choice didn't say, I think I'm going to choose to be mentally retarded. A baby who is born that is physically retarded, that their, their, their growth is stunted or what have you, they didn't choose that and say, you know, I think I only want one of my arms to develop. I think the other one, I just would rather it be a stub. They didn't, they didn't choose that. That just was the way that it happened with them. But when you are spiritually retarded, when you are in, in a spiritual uh, slowness, and when you are delayed uh, as far as your spirit, it is only only by your choice. And I say that because God has given you every resource that you would possibly need to be able to grow in Him. 
Pastor, I, I can't afford to go to a seminary or I, I'm not smart enough to go to a seminary. You are smart enough to get on your knees and you are smart enough to pray and you're smart enough to seek his face. Well, Pastor, I don't have the money to buy all these commentaries and, and to buy all these study Bibles and, and to do all this kind of thing. You don't need a dime to grow in Jesus Christ. All you need is a heart that wants to grow. And you need to make a choice that you're not going to stay where you are. Our growth, and I'm, I'm trying to hurry. I know we've been going a little long today. I'm trying to hurry some, but, but I, I want to make sure that we get this. Our growth in Jesus Christ is retarded due to laziness. There are so many other things that we will put before studying the Word of God. I'm not talking about reading a half a page of a devotion. And, I, and I'll tell you this, I'm thankful for devotions. I'm thankful because it gets your mind going in the right place and all that. And if anybody who's ever written a devotion, God bless you for it. And I've, I've thought about writing a devotion book myself, and I remember that Crystal would be the only one to buy it, so I didn't even bother. But devotions are all good and well. But they're not going to cause you to grow. True study of the Word of God. Study to show thyself approved unto God, who's a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. We do that by rightly dividing the word of truth. A devotion says Jesus loves you, and he died for you, and you need to be thankful for that today. Well, how many of you are thankful that Jesus died for you today? All right, well, then that devotion doesn't help you at all. You're already thankful. Or the thing is, we don't have to worry because consider the lilies of the field. They don't toil or spin, and yet... Even King Solomon was not arrayed in the same splendor as them. So God's going to provide for you. How many of you know that God is your provider? That devotion doesn't help you. I know there's times where maybe we need to hear that again, but what you need to do is you need to get into the Word of God. You need to go and you need to study that Word, and you need to say, I'm not going to let anything get in my way. But the, you know what the problem is with it? Is it takes time. And it takes effort. If you study the Word, it takes time, and it takes effort. We've got medical professionals in here. We've got engineers in here. We've got people that have, have, have uh, you know, gotten high degrees and all this sort of thing, and not just because of a fever, but you've gotten high degrees in, in things or whatever, and you put that time in because you had your focus, you had your vision on becoming whatever it was that you wanted to become, a doctor, a lawyer, a, 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 whatever it may be. You put effort and time into that. Why don't we want to put the same time and effort into learning what God really wants us to become because we're lazy? Because we'd rather do everything else in the world. How many of you have already been planning? And, and I want you to raise your hands. I'm not going to, this isn't a sucker punch, I promise. But how many of you, for the 4th of July, you've been planning some things? You've been planning either like a cookout, or you've been planning to go fishing, or, or you've been planning to have family over, and nobody has planned any, okay, fine. Nobody's going to be celebrating on Independence Day at, at, at Oak Grove. So there we go. Um, all right, normal people, will uh they will like plan cookouts you know it's like oh we're gonna we're gonna have a barbecue or we're gonna do a fish fry or we're gonna have a low country boil if you're having a low country boil by the way please let me know because i am free but uh you know we're gonna be doing all these things and you you plan that stuff okay, how many of you have plans for tomorrow you have things that you have already planned for tomorrow whether it's going to work or i got to go to the store i got to do all these things and you make these plans all right how many of you in those plans you said okay well first of all i need to take an hour and i need to study the word of god we don't do it. We don't do it because it takes too much effort. It takes too much time. We get lazy when it comes to the things of God. And I believe one of the reasons, and I'm not, I'm not trying to bash you. I'm saying, listen, everybody is dealing with this, but we need to do something about it. It doesn't do any good for us to say, yeah, everybody in the church struggles with this, and then just leave it alone. Let's do something about it. But, you know, we, we've got to get to that place where we say, we're going to make this our priority. And we're going to say, it's going to take effort, it's going to take time. But how much better off am I going to be if I'm studying the Word of God and I'm learning more about Him and I'm growing in my faith and I'm growing in my, my belief and I'm, I'm growing in my knowledge of the Word, but it takes time and it takes effort. We also have our growth retarded because of selfishness. 
Well, God, you want me to study and you want me to pray. You want me to pray for this person. Okay, uh, Lord, just bless him in Jesus' name. Amen. I got stuff to do. I'm busy. I got, I got stuff to do that's self-serving. I got, I got things I got to go to. I, I, I got things, you know, places I've got to go and people I need to see. You know, how many times do people ask us, oh, would you please be praying about thus and so? And you say, oh, absolutely, absolutely I will. And it's the last time it even crosses your mind. Because it doesn't affect you directly. It's affecting somebody else. Now, if it's something you need, oh, preacher, I need you to pray. Oh, let's get it on the women's prayer thread. We need to get together. We need to all bind together in the name of Jesus. And we need to pray about this because it affects me personally. But understand that if we're really growing in Christ, if we are really where we need to be with Jesus Christ, we're not just going to be thinking about the things that affect us personally. We're going to be thinking about the things that affect the body of Christ. Every time I hear about a church that their pastor has resigned, I begin to pray for that church, not because I want to go, but I begin to pray for that church, that God would, would help keep that church together, that God would strengthen them, that God would unite them together, because when a pastor is gone, amazing things begin to happen in the church, the way that Satan will attack, and the way Satan will try to destroy and divide and conquer and all that kind of thing. I begin to pray for whoever it is that God has come, bless you, whoever it is that God has coming uh, as the new pastor, I begin to pray for them, that God's anointing would be upon them, and that great vision would come to them, so that they can build that church to whatever it needs to be. It doesn't affect me at all whatsoever. I got my own thing going on right here. And like I said, I ain't going anywhere. I've got my own thing going on. But if I can't pray for the body of Christ, then what good am I to the body of Christ? If I can't take the time to say, Lord, I, it doesn't affect me. This has nothing to do with me. If, whether you answer this prayer or you don't, it doesn't change my life at all. But there's somebody in need. I need to take some time and I need to pray. You know, there, there's somebody who needs to hear something about the word. You know, I, I know I understand the concept of this. It, people have questions about the Bible, and they go, "I don't know." Let me ask my pastor. Do you not have a Bible? You can look it up too. Because guess what? I'm going to do. I'm going to look it up if I don't know the answer. I'm going to study it. And I don't mind you coming to me with questions because it makes me feel smart, even if I'm not. It makes me feel smart. And I could tell you something, and if you don't know the answer, you don't know if I'm right or wrong anyway. You just assume I'm right, and we all go along our merry way. I think it's interesting how I've got several friends that are uh, IT, and, uh, and what it seems like that they say is that uh, it's not that I know so much more than you. I just know how to Google better than you do. Because they can find, you know, that's when you have computer programs and, and you have computer problems, the first thing apparently that they do, now I don't know, Rochelle, Josh, maybe you guys, you know, you're going, no, I'm just that smart. Okay, our people are that smart, but other IT that I know, you know, they're just like, I just know where to look on Google to find out the answer. And then they look so genius and all this kind of thing. You know what? If somebody comes to you and says, well, but what about where the Bible says this and you don't know the answer, first of all, it's okay to say that you don't know. Second of all, the next thing you should be saying is, but let me find out for you. And you need to begin to study first. You need to begin to look in the Word first. And then if you find the answer, you can go tell them, and then you get the pat on the back. Congratulations. But if you don't know the answer, you can come to me, and we'll talk about it. We'll pray about it. We'll find out what that answer is. But we don't want to, it seems like that we don't want to put in that effort because we're selfish, because it doesn't affect us. Different charities that people will give towards because they know somebody who's been affected by that disease or by that problem. How many of you knew what bilariartresia, is that right? Bi, 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 bil, biliary, that's what I said. Biliary artresia. How many of you knew what that was before Emma Brooke was born? Exactly. I didn't either. In fact, when she said it, I thought she had the Holy Ghost, and I was asking for the Lord to bring interpretation of tongues. But do you know that since I found out that E.B. had that, you know I've looked it up. You know I've studied about it. I mean, I don't know hardly anything about it, but I mean, I've looked it up to get an idea. You know why? Because now it's affecting me. But imagine if we studied the Word about things that didn't just affect us right then and there, but it was just the Word of God so that we could grow 
so that we could become something in the eyes of Jesus Christ, so that we could become a soldier, so that we could become a teacher, so that we could become uh, the, the mouthpiece of the Lord in those times when people that don't know him have questions. Our growth is retarded spiritually because of laziness and selfishness. And the final thing, though, is that I believe it's retarded because of fear. Because if I grow, God's going to ask me to do more. And I may not be able to do that, so I'm just going to stay right where I am. People at work, they do their job, and they do their job well. They're few and far between now. And they, their boss comes to them and says, hey, you know what? We've got an assistant manager position opening up. You ought to go ahead and put, put in for that. No, no thanks. I'm fine right where I am. It's not a matter where they don't want to make more money because I really don't know anybody who doesn't want to make more money than they're making right now. It's not because of the, the fact that they, they, um, you know, they don't like the title assistant manager. Most of the time, it's because they're afraid that if they get in that position, they won't be able to do the job. This is the comfort zone. If I stay right here under management, this is the comfort zone. I can do this job in my sleep. I can close my eyes, and I could do this job and, and not have any problem at all. I'm the best at doing my job than anybody else, and they know it. They know I'm the best. But if I go forward, I try to become more than what I am right now. What if, I, what if I'm not as good? at that what if I struggle with that what if I go from being superstar employee to mediocre manager and there are people that will actually give up the opportunity to advance in their department because of fear of the unknown I believe that we have people in the church that they don't want to grow any more in God because of the fact they're afraid of what God is going to ask them to do if I get baptized in the Holy Spirit, God's probably going to call me to preach. Maybe. But it's not like it's an automatic invitation. You know, you're not going to have the bishop come walking in the doors and say, congratulations on your baptism in the Holy Spirit. Here's your credentials. Go find a church and pastor. It doesn't work that way. Well, Lord, if I begin to grow in, in, in my relationship with you, the pastor might ask me to teach. Well, that may happen anyway. We need teachers. Brother Greg? No, I thought so. You know, we need, we need people that are willing to, to invest in, in our people and, and willing to, to bring forth the Word and, and willing to, to sow that into people's lives. So, you know, you growing in God, I mean, I may ask you anyway because I assume that you're where you need to be. Now, I may find out very quickly that you ain't. Well, if, if, if I... If I really begin to study the Word and I really begin to grow in the Word, then you know, what if God has me go and pray for somebody that I don't even know? What if they have, He has me go and lay hands on somebody and pray for them and I don't even know them and I, I'm so shy and I'm so nervous. I mean, I don't want to do that. Do you really believe that God is going to tell you to do something and you're going to be sitting there crying in fear the whole time that you're doing it going, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. And He's just pushing you anyway. As we grow in God, He will change our desires. And the things we thought we would never do before, we're saying, Lord, just give me a door, and I'm going to go through it. Do you know how many people I told when I was a youth pastor, I do not want a pastor. I do not want to be the man. I do not want to be the one having to actually pastor the church. They kept telling me, when are you going to be a real preacher? And that would just get on my nerves. So I'm like, I am a real preacher. I wasn't good, but I was a real preacher, you know. And, and they said, when, no, but when are you going to pastor a church? And I would just say, that ain't happening. Sorry. I took a, a spiritual, uh, what do they call it, the spiritual assessment test or whatever it is to see what my spiritual gifts were and all that kind of thing. And the number one thing said pastor. I was like, this thing don't know what it's talking about. <laughs> you guys might be saying, that thing didn't know what it was talking about. But as I grew in Christ, even though I was in ministry, I still had places to go. Even though I'm a pastor today, and I've been in ministry for over 25 years, even though I've been called to the ministry since I was, uh, since I was nine years old, and that was a while ago, I'm still growing every single day. 
because I still have so much further to go. But now, the last time I had a staff position, I was chomping at the bit. Whereas before I was saying, I'm never going to pastor, I was chomping at the bit saying, God, just open that door and let me have a chance behind that pulpit again. Let me get up there and let me preach the word. Let me get up there and let me love people. Let me get up there and show a church how God can move in their lives and what they need to do in their lives to grow closer to Jesus Christ. God, just give me an opportunity. There's nothing for you to fear in growing in God. There's nothing for you to fear. Because I tell you now, and I, I tell you this from experience, if God calls you to something, He will not just put the calling in your life, He will put the desire in your life as well. He will confirm that in your spirit. I want you to stand this morning. Musicians, come if you would, please. And I appreciate your patience today. We're not too bad. Spiritual retardation sounds like I'm trying to make fun, trying to poke fun, and I most certainly am not. It's a plague in the church today. It's a plague in the church today. We have people that are fine. Lord, just give me that bottle of milk. Let me just come and sit on the pew, Jesus. Maybe every now and again, I'll help with a class. Or maybe I'll make a dinner for the funeral or the wedding or some kind of church dinner. But Lord, I'm fine right now just being a Christian. And I've actually had people tell me that. I've had people tell me, oh, I believe my call is just to be a Christian. Everybody's call is to be a Christian. There's none of us that are righteous, and it's not the will of God that any man should perish. So all of us are supposed to be giving our lives to Jesus Christ. But I think we've gotten into this thing where we've used it as an excuse. It's not my call. That's not my call. I'm not called to be one of the big shots in the church. I'm not called to be one of the, uh, one of the teachers or one of the speakers. That's not my calling. So we use that as an excuse not to get into the Word and grow. Because you're able to do the work. You're able to do your job right now of sitting on the pew. You have a backside, and you can use it. You're, you're filling the pew. You're doing your job. Not one of us is called to fill a pew. Not one of us is called to just sit there and let everything else around us grow while we remain the same. You might say, oh, well, that's a pride thing, and, and uh, so that's why I don't, I don't try to become anything in God is because that's a pride thing. I just want to be saved. Just give me my cabin in heaven while everybody else has got the mansion on the hilltop. I just want my little cabin. Just give me a little corner. Just let me be the little homeless person on the corner with a cardboard sign, you know, and, and let me just be in heaven. That's all that I want. My friend, I want everything that God has for me, but to get that, I've got to become everything God has called me to become. I've got to get into His Word. I've got to study. I've got to know who God is. The best that I can know Him. I just want you to close your eyes for a moment and I want you to ask yourself, uh, do some spiritual uh, inventory here. Do some introspection and try to uh, just ask yourself, where am I in my growth in Christ? And be honest. We've got people that'll say, oh, I, I don't know a whole lot of Scripture. I've just never... I've never learned a lot of Scripture. I, I can't learn a lot of Scripture. I don't have a good memory. But you can name the lyrics of every favorite song that you know. You can quote movies that you've watched over and over and over again. But have you taken the time to learn that Scripture? Have you taken the time to find out how to study the Word? You don't have to be stuck on the milk. And God doesn't want you to be stuck on the milk. It's good for a time, but eventually some effort has to be put in. Where are you today? Where are you today? What I want to ask first, with every head bowed, every eye closed, what I want to ask first is if you're in this house and you say, well, pastor, I don't even know Christ. I can't even call myself a Christian. 
I've, I'm not saved. I've not prayed the sinner's prayer. I've not given my heart and my life to Jesus Christ. But I want to do that today. I'm going to ask you, if you would, to raise your hand and keep your hand up. If you're in this place and you say, I want to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior today, I want you to raise your hand and I'm going to give you just a few moments. I don't want anybody to walk out of this place saying I didn't have an opportunity to receive him. All right, now what I want you to do is this. The rest of you, you, you didn't raise your hand, so I'm assuming that you either know the Lord or that you don't want to know the Lord. If you are in this place and you want to know more about the Lord, just like we sang about before I preach, if you want to know more about Jesus, other than just a few Bible stories, if you want to know more about the character of who God is, because that's going to build your faith, then I want you to just begin to do that introspection right now. And I want you to begin to look at yourself right now and to look and say, am I in a place where... Where I'm, I'm maybe not where I want to be, but I'm, I'm growing. I, I'm definitely studying. I'm praying. I'm giving my all to God, but I still have a little ways to go. Or are you in a place where you say I've been stuck in neutral this whole time? I haven't, I, I haven't changed in my relationship with God. I haven't gotten any closer to Him in years, and it's time for me to do it. If you say that and you want to know more about Jesus, I, I just want you to take some time and come forward to the altar and begin to pray and begin to seek His face. Begin to ask Him, Lord, would you just draw me closer to you? God, would you show me how I need to do this? Would you show me what steps I need to take so I can become more uh, than, than what I am today? I just want I want you to begin to pray now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord, for where you have brought me to. I thank you, God, for where I am in my relationship with Christ. When I think about when I first got saved, Lord, I, I, I know I've come so far. I know that your power has brought me so far, and I've grown so much, Lord. But God, there is still so much more that you need to put into me. God, I pray that my spiritual growth will not be retarded. I pray that it will not be slowed. I pray my progress will not be stopped, God. But Lord, even as pastor of this church, Father, I pray that you will just help me to grow in you. Help me daily to seek a way that I can draw even just a, a little bit closer to you, Father. Just a little bit closer, Lord, so I can know you more. Just a little bit closer, Father, so I can be more the instrument that you want me to be. And Father, I know that before this church can do anything in the, in the heavenlies, before we can do anything for the kingdom of God we have got to allow you to do the work we have got to allow you to help us to grow to be who we need to be before this congregation can grow in numbers we have got to grow closer to you it doesn't matter how long we've been in church it doesn't matter how long we say we've known you God we've got to draw closer to you would you give us that desire today would you put that desire in our hearts today in the name of Jesus? In the name of Jesus, Lord, don't let us be, don't let us be satisfied. God, don't let us be in a place where we're satisfied with where we are. Don't let us ever be in a place where we just want to sit in our comfort zone. God, stir us up so we can stir up our community, so we can stir up this world in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Would you just take a few moments, lift up your hands and just praise him. Lift up your hands and just worship him today. Tell him how much you love him. Before we dismiss the service this morning, would you just tell him how much you love him, how much you desire to draw closer to him? And if that desire isn't there, I want you to begin to pray that God will place the desire in you. If that desire isn't there, Lord, would you, would you just put that desire in our hearts, God? Father, if there's anybody in this place, Lord, that they feel like that they're exactly where they need to be, that they don't need to draw any closer, that they don't need to do anything else, they just need to stay on the path that they are and just keep on maintaining, God, would you just stir up our hearts so that we can see that you want to do so much more. Lord, minister to those, Father, that want more of you. Give them more of you, Father, as they seek your face, as they read your word, as they pray, as they glorify you, as they worship and they praise you, Father. Lord, I pray that you will draw them closer to you in the name of Jesus. And we know that as we draw close to you, Father, Lord, we're going to see great miracles. We're going to see great things happen in our lives. We're going to see our 
our sons and our daughters, our fathers and our mothers saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. We're going to see our brothers and sisters in Christ that are going to be healed, that are going to be delivered, that are going to be restored, that are going to be encouraged and lifted up in Jesus' name. Lord, we're going to see miracles happen, both in the physical as far as uh, physical healings and, and, and financial blessings, but we're also going to see spiritual miracles happen where somebody is going to be one way and you're going to turn them around and make them a new creature in your presence. God, as we leave this place today, Lord, I pray we will leave with a heart that is drawn towards you. I pray, God, we will leave with a heart, Lord, where we are seeking more of you, Father. Because if we don't have more of you, we don't have anything. If we're satisfied with what we've had, Lord, we're lost. Do the work in our hearts and our minds, Jesus. And we thank you for your many blessings. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can be dismissed if you want to pray. Just continue to pray. Keep playing a little bit longer if you would, please. Uh, but uh, just be reverent as you leave this house today. Be blessed. Lift up your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ in prayer. Hallelujah. God bless you today.